Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard, and a while back I did a review on the Rossi RS-22. It's about a $100 rifle, uh, pretty inexpensive and a pretty good shooter. And then someone asked me if I would do a review on the RB, uh, either the 17 or the 22. Well, I'm a sucker for 17, so I went ahead and picked up a Rossi RB-17. Now, a rifle like this, it's it's probably it's not going to have uh, open sights on it. It's going to have uh, scope mounts on it. So I thought, well, I really don't want to buy another 17 caliber scope. So if you remember, I did the Mossberg International 817, and I put a BSA Sweet 17 scope on her. So I'm going to take this off and put it on the Rossi. Now I have already opened up the box on the uh, Rossi, but we're going to do an unboxing here and show you what's in it. All right, here's the box, just a big plain cardboard box. We'll open it up, it's got a couple flaps in here, flip those up, and there's the rifle in the bag. Here's, here's the magazine. Here's a uh, warning label, here's the lock and the owner's manual, and inside this little flap over here is where the bolt is. We'll get all that out of there, get the box out of the way. Go ahead and get the rifle out of the bag. And here it is. Now, I noticed something about this once I took it out of the bag and looked at it earlier. Um, let's get the bolt out of here. It is sealed up in this bag here. So we'll tear that open. And it's pretty well oiled up too. Get that out, we'll get the magazine out. Now this is a uh, 17 HMR. Boy, it is really oily too. But uh, we'll get it all wiped down, get the excessive stuff off of there. But one of the things I really noticed about this rifle when I took it out was it looks real familiar. Just the, the way the barrel is and the way the receiver is on it. We'll get the chamber plug out of there. The uh, trigger guard, everything looked real familiar to me. And that's when I took a look at the Mossberg International 817. That receiver is identical. The trigger guard is identical. The only thing that's different is the stock itself. The barrels are the same. They got the same mounts on them and everything. So really I should have no problem taking the scope off of here and putting it on there because it is the same gun. This is uh, the Rossi RB17, and this is the Mossberg 817. And Rossi is made in Brazil. So guess where the Mossberg International is made also? made in Brazil. So what do you want to bet that these are probably made in the exact same factory? Uh, in fact, it's pretty much the exact same gun. You look at the back of the bolt on the Mossberg, you'll see that little red cocking indicator and kind of a little um, concentric circles on there. Let's look at the back of the bolt for the Rossi. It has the cocking indicator on it with the concentric circles on there. Let's go ahead and pull this bolt out. There we go. Let's see if I can do a little comparison there. It's the exact same gun, just a different name on it, a different handle on the, uh, the bolt, but they are identical. So what I ended up doing here was just buying the same gun with a different name on it. But you know what? Like I said, I'm a sucker for 17, so it doesn't bother me. Um, and somebody wanted to see it, so I'll do what I can to, um, you know, kind of let the customer or the viewer know what I think of a certain firearm. And then they can make their decision whether or not they want to purchase it. Now, the 817 here is 
is one that uh, I have not found it anywhere with this stock on it. Uh, they still make the 817, but it's a little bit different, different stock on it. So when I seen this one, I wanted the uh, 817. I like this stock. I really wanted it, so I went ahead and got it. But like I said, we're going to get this scope off of here, mount it on there, take it outside, and give the Rossi RB17 a couple shots. Now, if you look at those two, they are the identical gun. They really are. Just different labeling on it. Uh, most of the markings are identical between the two. It does say imported, made in Brazil. This is from Brass Tech International, Miami, Florida, made in Brazil by CRC is what it says. Yeah, and on here it says made in Brazil by CRC. Identical gun, just a different buttstock on it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the review anyways. See if I like uh, this stock maybe better than that one. I don't think so. I think I like the 817 better. Let's get this out of the way. And we'll go ahead and put this on here. Everything should be just about set perfect because, well, like I said, they're the same gun. I shouldn't have to change the eye relief or anything. Should be the same length to pull the whole nine yards. It's just a different stock. But we'll get it out there in range and give it a try. All right, we're out here on the range with the RB17. I've got the scope mounted on it, and I've got some targets set up at 50 yards. We're gonna take a couple shots at them. Now, loading the magazines on this is just about like any other stick-style magazine. The only problem I have with both the Rossi and the Mossberg is the way the magazine catch is on there, the latch. You should be able to grab it and squeeze it with your thumb there and pull it down, but it's kind of tough to do, so you're gonna to have to probably use two hands with it, push that latch forward, which is kind of small, and then pull it out of there. Now we're gonna be shooting some Federal Premium. These are 17 grain Hornady VMAX polymer tips on here. Uh, muzzle velocity of 2,550 feet per second. It is a five round magazine, which is convenient because they're in rows of five there. And just push it in at that gap, and then push it back and push on. To put it back in, just push it up in there. All right, the 50 yard targets are down there. This is a direct takeoff from the Mossberg 817 right onto the RB17. And let's see how it does. Kind of a heavy trigger pull on it, nothing terrible. It doesn't have any kind of adjustments on the trigger. It is what it is from the factory, unless you want to get in there and do some tinkering. All right, there's my five shots at 50 yards. We'll go up there and take a peek at the target. Um, I can see them through the scope there, and they're kind of in a kind of a loose group, if you ask me, but they're all consistent. So between the Mossberg 817 and this one, there is a little bit of misalignment, but uh, it's pretty easy to dial in with these turrets, especially since they're big open top turrets there. All right, there's my five shot group right there. Of course, I was aiming for the center there and that's where I hit. Um, it is cold out here today and it is a little bit breezy, but um, you know, it, it could be dialed in. It's also a cold barrel on this gun too. And a lot of times when you're shooting rifles, um, the barrel needs to be seasoned, I guess, kind of like a uh, cast iron skillet, huh? But uh, we'll take a few more shots with it and see how it does. All right, I didn't take any actual measurements, but those shots looked like they were about an inch and a half to the right and probably about inch and a half high, maybe. So we will move the point of impact down. I do have it, I did have it zeroed at 100 yards. We'll try that. Uh, this does have a cap over the uh, windage but you've still got a nice size open turret there. Usually you get your windage set, it doesn't change uh, depending on the range that you're at, but we wanna move the point of impact to the left a little bit. All right, then we'll try that and uh, see how it does. Get another magazine loaded up and give it a try. 
All right, we're gonna take a few shots at the target on the left. That one sounded a little bit different. Now, one of the things I have noticed on several of these cases, they are split around the neck. I did manage to pull them down a little bit closer to the center. Still not quite right. Probably need to take a few more clicks. We'll load up another magazine and try it again. That was a whole lot better. No real creep to this trigger. It's just a hard pull and then it breaks. Uh, and it's not a very long pull, it's just hard and then it breaks. All right guys, there was 15 shots with the 17 HMR, the Rossi RB17. It's the same stock pretty much that's on the RS22. It's the same Rossi stock. Uh, it's really the only difference between the Mossberg 817 and the Rossi RB17 is just the stock that's on it. Other than that, the action and everything is identical. And had I known in the beginning, I, I might not have gotten this, but um, I don't mind. I like 17. I like all the 17 calibers. I like 22 Magnum. And I think this is available in 22 Magnum. Not, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, it's just, it's a pretty good gun, and it's on the lower end of the price range for 17s. You can certainly spend a whole lot more on a 17 than than this. Uh, I think I paid 161 for this. That's shipping, tax, everything, any fees included. The scope I already have, but I think the scope I'll put a link on it in Amazon. I think the scope is right around the 70 or 80 dollar mark, somewhere around there. Nothing fancy. It does have the open top turret on it. Uh, the side turret does have a cover on it. Uh, one of the things that I both like and dislike about this scope is the lens covers. The lens covers on here are an anodized aluminum. They're a hard cover and they screw on there. But really, you're not going to get much better protection than that. It's just they're not quickly removable. You know, if you keep this by your door for varmints on the farm or whatever, it's not the best choice. I mean, you can certainly get different covers to go on there. But other than that, it's a pretty good combination. It's an inexpensive rifle. It shoots great. It feels great. It does have uh, sling swivel studs on it. You can uh, put a sling on there. It's lightweight. It's easy to carry. And a great varmint gun. 17 HMR for dispatching groundhogs. Uh, maybe, you know, the occasional coyote if you're at the right distance. I don't know that I would take a shot at a really far distance uh, with a 17 HMR at a coyote. But it can be done. Uh, shot placement is everything. Um, but it's a pretty good little rifle. It's inexpensive and um, it's my favorite caliber. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review. If you could, hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos. Hit this button over here to subscribe, and thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.